G'day everyone, welcome to uh, the weekly general update for the 1st and 2nd of September and the uh, long-awaited uh, meeting or a statement of central bankers occurred last night and uh, it was pretty pretty boring stuff it was really Bernanke just restating what he's basically been saying all year and that's um, he will leave the door open for more stimulus uh, if and when uh, is needed but the way that the market reacted I think the market sees it as pretty much a, a done deal but anyway it gives us some more uh, visibility uh, we've got further meetings uh, this week with uh, the ECB and uh, and also the possibility of, uh, of China doing something as well so I still am of the view that um, despite the volatility that we've seen in the last couple of days of last week that we're still in for a reasonably good period through to the end of the year uh, I expect resource stocks to be volatile and so if you're not really into the really volatile stocks then you might want to give uh, resources a, a bit of a wider berth with the exception of gold um, but certainly there's some uh, terrific uh, trends and trades in the non-resource area as well that, uh, that we've been participating in so let's get on with the summary um, first of all just a reminder this is general advice only so the S&P index uh, on the week ended up declining by seven points but certainly regained some ground on Friday night but it's really been a, a month-long sideways range and uh, one would think that something's got to give fairly soon because normally the S&P index uh, wouldn't be caught in such a tight range for this length of time uh, it's tested the 38.2 percent retracement level on three occasions now we'll have a look at that on the chart so that level is important to hold otherwise we'll uh, see a correction of a bit more substance and the Australian index ended up down 35 but uh, we'll see certainly a bit of a turnaround on Monday morning I'm sure uh, the banks were steady on the week but resource stocks got absolutely smashed on uh, fears about China uh, the iron ore price dropping through $90 and the uh, forward outlook from uh, Boat Longyear BLY which uh, came out with um, pretty good results but it was really just their forward outlook um, that really kind of spooked the market and um, resource stocks were dealt very very harshly on uh, Thursday and Friday but when you really look at it and stand back it's really only iron ore that's really having a hard time of it and that's largely because the Chinese steel mills are destocking which I is the sort of thing that happens on an uh, infrequent basis but it's happened uh, several times before and you can't blame the Chinese for wanting to get a better uh, iron ore price so I'm still of the view that looking at all the, um, the information and all the indicators that I look at that uh, we're probably pretty close to a low in the iron ore price and we will see a bit of a, a rebound into the end of the year so um, I think we're seeing the worst of it at the moment but uh, in the Australian market last week there were certainly plenty of signs of panic and that generally gives you some uh, buying opportunities uh, now the US dollar the all-important currencies uh, the US dollar dipped below very important support on Friday night and so looks as though it's um, it's probably heading a bit lower um, there was a partial recovery off the lows but um, you'd have to say that the odds are that the US dollar is heading lower and therefore the U euro is um, is heading higher and just reached uh, an important resistance level on Friday night now turning to bond yields um, and this is interesting because stock markets were um, were so um, relatively solid and also the US dollar was down we saw Spanish 10-year bond yields jump very sharply back towards 7% now normally what you'd see with that happening is a bit of a flight to um, to the US dollar so that's a real anomaly the Italian yield went up a little bit as well but it, it's um, not quite as high but getting back towards 6 so there's still plenty in Europe to um, you know to be agitated about but uh, nevertheless we'll go with what is and at the moment um, gold and um, in particularly gold took off on Friday night and uh, we saw stocks also have a fairly positive session 
So let's have a look at the S&P index and you can see here that um, we've had a fairly lengthy period now. It was really from uh, the 7th, 7th of August until now we've basically been in this range between 1398 and about 1426 which was a, a spike high and the last seven or eight sessions have been pretty much in the same area. So you can see here the retracement from the high of um, August 21 back to the low of August 2. Our 38.2% level comes in at 1399. Uh, we had a dip to that level on Friday of last week. We had another dip on Thursday of this week just gone but still seems to be holding that level. Um, my view is if this level holds the fact that it's only pulled back to the 38.2 percent level is an indication of strength and therefore I would expect to see the market have another crack at 425 and probably then um, try and move up to this next resistance level which is about 1440, 1445 so they're the key levels to look for. Um, 1398, uh, we really don't want to see the market down below um, that, that 1400 level again. Otherwise, I think you'd have to suspect that we may get a retracement of this bigger run, the run that started uh, on the 4th of June. <clears throat> and that would take us, uh, that would take us down uh, well into the 1300s. So that's the, uh, that's the important one to look at. Let's just have a look at the VIX index. We saw a, a bit of a spike up over the last uh, week. The VIX had been down around 12, got up, which is still extremely low, got up to around 17 at the peak, um, came back off again on Friday night. But at least there's a little bit more um, covering and, and buying of insurance going on in the market. Let's have a look at our index. Uh, it's really only been held up by the banks in the latter half of the week. Uh, we saw significant sell-off in resources and um, I, th I think we'll see some sort of rebound on Monday. So clearly the Australian index still heading in uptrend. Now let's move on and have a look at, uh, at gold and, and gold was really the big story of Friday night, gained $21 on the week but uh, gained more than $30 on Friday night so a very big move on gold. Clearly confirmed the breakout as we'll see from the chart in just a minute and, uh, and the uptrend, the renewed uptrend after uh, 11 months of consolidation is, um, is, appears to be well and truly underway now. And when you get confirmation on a weekly basis, not just a daily basis, it adds weight to it. Now silver, huge rise Friday night, uh, looking very powerful indeed. And uh, you'd have to think that, um, that silver has got uh, plenty left in it yet. The copper price, uh, steady on the week, but uh, certainly no signs like iron ore. And, that, and that's the thing that um, is really what's out of kilter here, that pretty much all other commodities are holding up pretty well. It's just iron ore and to a degree coal that has been uh, hit fairly hard uh, for different reasons. Now oil um, has really been in a pretty tight range on the week and finished uh, largely flat. There's the uh, this chart for spot copper. So you can see really we've been in a pretty tight range now since uh, the latter half of May in copper. So copper chart not really indicating the kind of disaster that uh, that iron ore is um, is pointing to and that's why I think it's that's just a bit of a short-term cyclical thing. The, I think you'll probably see the Chinese steel mills um, starting to restock at some point in the next few months and uh, we'll probably see the iron ore price work higher. So let's have a look at, uh, at gold, first of all on a daily chart and you can see this was a big move on Friday night. So clearly there's a good trend on here. We had a three or four day pullback which is what I talked about, uh, the fact that we would probably have in, uh, in last weekend's video. So three or four days down and then a real blast off on Friday night to end up um, starting to 
push towards the $1,700 mark again. This is gold on a weekly basis. We had this smaller triangle in here that we broke out of the week before last and then clearly broke through that bigger picture triangle which is the whole consolidation since the peak in September last year and broke north of that. So it's possible we could pull back and retest the breakout which would bring us back to about 640. Um, but to my mind this now is clearly signaling that we're heading higher and my target has always been for a couple of years uh, beyond $2,000 an ounce. Uh, just how much further it goes depends very much on the actions of uh, central banks. Now this was silver also put had a, um, uh, a little triangle formation here blasted out of it about uh, a week and a bit ago and we had a couple of days pause and then a massive night last night um, so silver really moving very very strongly silver's up nearly 20 percent in uh, in just a couple of weeks so that's a uh, that's a pretty powerful move there on silver so just to finish off in terms of strategy um, basically as I said I think uh, markets are probably uh, bias to the upside as a whole within that some some sectors will do far better than others and some sectors may not go up at all but basically looking to buy the dips uh, with a focus on gold and also on non-resource stocks um, that have got the appropriate technical patterns that uh, that we look for but as far as the other resource stocks go um, we'll probably see some good gains but we'll also see some significant volatility so that's why I'm um, just being a little bit cautious on the resource side of things. So that's it for this weekend. Cheers.